You may have all already seen this powerful image of a young boy drowned on a beach in Turkey. His name was Aylan Kurdi. He was three years old and he was one of the 2,500 Syrian refugees who died this summer trying to cross the Mediterranean. When the rest of the world saw this image, the discussion of the refugee crisis in Syria increased significantly. And it's because every major news outlet covered this story. Unlike the staggering numbers of refugees throughout the years, it only took a single image to raise awareness of this ongoing crisis. But why is that? When one person dies, it's a tragedy. But when a million people die, it's a statistic. Since 2011, 12 million Syrians have been displaced from their homes due to the ongoing civil war, and over 4 million have fled the country seeking refuge. And these numbers show no signs of waning. According to the United Nations, an average of 32,000 Syrians are forcibly displaced from their homes every day. Further, the UN reports that over 210,000 Syrians have been killed as a result of the war, and over 840,000 have been critically injured. But these are just numbers, and we see numbers and statistics every day. To someone thousands of miles away, these numbers mean nothing. It's easy to think that these millions of Syrians have nothing to do with you. You'll never meet them, so why should you care? It's even easier to say, this isn't our problem, or Europe is responsible for these refugees. And that is the root of the problem in the Western world in helping these refugees. We need to humanize the numbers and change our perceptions. We need to look at these statistics in a different light. We need to see these refugees as if they were people we know. But that is so much easier said than done. We struggle to compare these strangers to our friends because most of us imagine the Middle East as an entirely different world. And what we need to understand is that despite the circumstances, we are all inherently the same. Recently, a more optimistic story was published of 17-year-old Aslan Al-Hakim who walked 300 miles from Damascus, Syria to Greece and carried his husky puppy Rose the entire way. When asked by interviewers why, Aslan simply responded, I love my dog. And it's through these specific stories that attention is brought to the ongoing crisis in Syria because these stories humanize the statistics that we see every day. Don't we all love our dogs? From there, we need to take that empathy and multiply it by 12 million to understand the full force of this refugee crisis. They all have stories and they all have families. When I say we, I really mean to address the United States and Europe. While every country struggles with their own domestic problems, it's undeniable that the Western world simply has more resources and financial growth than the majority of countries in the Middle East. Syrians currently comprise of one-fourth of the total world refugee population, and yet 95% of them are living in surrounding countries. Turkey has taken in 1.9 million of the refugees, Jordan has taken in 1.2 million, which is now a fourth of their total population, and Lebanon has taken in 629,000. These countries are overwhelmed and suffering from economic repercussions, unemployment, and a looming danger of terrorism as a result. Although countries in the Middle East offer cultural similarities, their political and economic instability will only create a vacuum effect for the affected families and prolong the struggle of placing refugees. According to Antonio Guanteres, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, this is the biggest refugee population from a single conflict in a generation. The greater problem isn't the numbers, but the future repercussions should nothing change now. 50% of the Syrian refugees are children, and of that, 80% do not have access to education. Further, the average refugee experience is now 17 years, which tells us that this is no temporary problem. These figures are meant to prioritize the need to help this specific group of refugees, but in reality, a new group emerges with every generation. If we, as global citizens, cannot provide a successful solution for this current crisis, what is to be said for the future of our world and global communication. So the overarching question remains, why isn't Europe and the United States doing more to help these refugees? As citizens of the United States, the worst thing we can be saying right now is that this isn't our problem. Apathy towards this crisis betrays one of the founding principles upon which our nation was built. The words on the Statue of Liberty read, give me your tired, your poor, 
your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me, I lift my lamp beside the golden door. And yet despite this, politicians still argue that we are not responsible for these refugees. I urge the government to recall the last time the United States infamously denied refugees. In 1938, when 300,000 Jewish refugees were trying to obtain a limited 27,000 visas, in, or when in May of 1939, the United States literally sent a boat back to Europe full of 900 refugees. Further, we can't argue that our lack of action is due to the refugee distant location because we've faced similar failures to place refugees only 100 miles from our border. In fact, the Cuban refugee crisis less than 30 years ago highlighted the United States' failure to react and create successful solutions. So Obama's administration has pledged to accept 10,000 refugees in the 2016 fiscal year, but faces overwhelming dissension across America. But what we need to understand is that our obligation is different with the Syrians. The United States has been actively involved in Syria, whether through funding and training military groups, as the CIA and Pentagon did in 2013, or by issuing drone strikes, which began in 2014. For the country that spends more than the next 10 countries combined on defense spending, you would think that the United States would feel more responsible for the innocent lives that we put in danger. The State Department reports that since the Civil War began, the United States has only accepted roughly 2,000 refugees. Last year, Syrians only represented less than 2% of the total 70,000 refugees admitted to the United States. Following the tragic terrorist attacks in Paris on November 13th, the Western world has unjustly reacted to Syrians in Europe. Poland and Germany were the first European countries to officially close their borders to Syrian refugees, and politicians in the United States have reacted out of fear even going as far as calling for the deportation of all Syrians. CNN reports that 24 state governors have already announced that they will no longer accept Syrian refugees. In reacting to this crisis, we need to remember that fear is not a solution. Fear and hate, ISIS's most powerful weapons, only empower terrorist groups and send the message that they have won this battle. Fear only widens the gap between the Middle East and the Western world by dehumanizing an entire demographic, and we need to unify as one world now more than ever. We all coexist on the same planet, and we need to understand the ethical responsibility that we share as humans. Part of the problem with this crisis is the failure to understand it for what it is. The media has falsely labeled this a migrant crisis. Migrants want to leave their homes, while refugees are fleeing their homes. These people are not terrorists, they're people escaping terror. The millions of Syrian families aren't risking their lives to explore employment opportunities. They're fleeing for a chance at a life worth living. Although you'll never see it on the news, ISIS has targeted Syrian civilians more than any other group and that have subjected them to ruthless torture and murder. The Syrian refugees are fleeing their homes due to the destruction and instability that surround them and are left without financial security, legal documentation, or work permits. As Settlement Services International puts it, the concerns of refugees are human rights and safety, not economic advantage. These are people with nowhere to go and no one to help them. So we can push for policy change or reform to international law, but these solutions are band-aids to the overarching problem of xenophobia in the Western world. We must remind ourselves that the best way to constantly be fighting the war against terrorism is to not give them what they want by allowing fear to drive ignorance and hatred towards these refugees. 13th century Christian theologian and philosopher Thomas Aquinas reminds us this when he wrote, fear is such a powerful emotion for humans that when we allow it to take us over, it drives compassion right out of our hearts. The 21st century has created never before seen connections between the countries of the world and our attitudes need to reflect the progression of our technology. Recent media attention has exposed the severity of this crisis to the United States and not surprisingly, the increase in attention has correlated to an increase in sympathy. This is one of the first real global crises that my generation can influence and as I and other students prepare to vote in the upcoming presidential election, it's crucial that we broaden our understanding of current events. So what is the easiest, most realistic thing that we can all do to help? We can talk about it. 
We have power over media, and our demand can raise awareness and increase nationwide discussion. High school students have already shown the power of their demand in selecting the November 2015 high school public forum debate topic to focus on addressing this refugee crisis. Social media has allowed this to be the first time the general public has had all access and all uncensored angles of a crisis. One of my personal favorite websites is a blog called whoarethereefugees.tumblr.com, which humanizes this crisis through specific stories like those of Aslan al-Hakim and makes these strangers relatable. The more this issue is discussed, the more likely it is people will open their minds to prioritize this issue as a humanitarian crisis rather than a political topic. Our end goal is to shift our thinking towards the refugees and see this crisis in a more altruistic light. Moving past the social and political barriers that create prejudice in the United States will unlock the ability to create successful solutions in the future. Thank you.